Five Nights at Freddy's is a very influential video game series, large in part due to its popularity on YouTube. Gameplay videos and fan theories are not the only types of content that the series can produce, however, as throughout the years, the game series has fostered a very healthy fan music community. Contrary to what you might think, there are still FNAF songs being made about the first game. This is a FNAF 1 song, released on January 3rd, 2022. That same day, Kachi released a FNAF 3 song, and Mooney Music released a FNAF Security Breach song. The FNAF song community isn't even underground, as on January 8th, CG5 released their FNAF Security Breach song, garnering 2.2 million views in just over a week. There is a large and complicated history to the FNAF fan song community, and that's what I'm here to analyze. Welcome to The Sound of the FNAF Fan Song. Throughout the release of the games, the community has seemed to gravitate towards different sounds and styles of music, which is why we will be separating the sounds of the FNAF fan song into eras, just like the lore timeline. Era 1 will include FNAF 1 and 2, Era 2 will have FNAF 3 and 4, Era 3 will have Sister Location and Pizzeria Simulator, Era 4 will have FNAF Ultimate Custom Night, Help Wanted, and Special Delivery, and Era 5 will be FNAF Security Breach. Era 1, which contains FNAF 1 and 2, and spans from August 2014 to March 2015. The explosion of The Living Tombstone and Mandapony, with DA Games, Try Hard Ninja, Groundbreaking, and Give Heart Records beginning to make a name for themselves. The big songs of this time were the FNAF 1 and 2 song by The Living Tombstone, along with Stay Calm by Griffinilla, the Madame Macabre songs, and some of the biggest songs for Mandapony such as Survive the Night and Just Gold. The Living Tombstone obviously took over this era, with the Manda Pony DA games groundbreaking and Give Heart Records songs based on the first two games coming at the end of the first era to the beginning of the second era. This era also solidifies the core aspect of the basic FNAF fan song. Just listen to these songs released during this time to see what I'm talking about. Hear those drums? Dubstep drums are king in this era. Almost every popular FNAF song at that time had this dubstep headcracker snare and kicks. There are, of course, a few exceptions to this, such as the Madame Macabre songs, Mangled from Give Heart Records, and the Muse of Discord songs, but the vast majority follow this formula. Another honorable mention to this era is the Reese bass, which is prominent in quite a bit of songs in this era. What's particularly interesting about the inclusion of these dubstep drums is that during this time, the biggest electronic styles are Big Room House and Anthem House. That is, except for this song. The Recess album from Skrillex was released months before the first FNAF song. I believe that The Living Tombstone took inspiration from Skrillex in his first FNAF song, which then caused ripple effects throughout the entire FNAF song community. Era 2, which includes FNAF 3 and 4, and lasts from March 2015 to October to November 2016. The beginning of the decline for TLT in favor of metal acts such as DA Games, Aviators, Try Hard Ninja, and Give Heart Records. This era is defined as the sudden introduction and success of metal elements into the series. With the introduction of the third and fourth games, the FNAF series turned much more mature as the story and lore progressed from spooky to disturbing. The music also follows this, as the songs tend to follow a more metal path, with DA Games releasing a staggering five songs based on FNAF 4 alone. The introduction of the distorted guitar also gives this era of FNAF history a more mature tone. 
big songs at this time are Die in a Fire by The Living Tombstone, It's Time to Die, Break My Mind and March Onward to Your Nightmare by DA Games, Salvaged, Nightmare and the Finale by Give Heart Records, Run Run by CK9C, Our Little Horror Story and Sweet Dreams by Aviators, and Just an Attraction, It's Me and Dream Your Dream by Try Hard Ninja. As stated before, this era is defined as the success of metal elements in the FNAF music scene. This is the sound of Arrow 2, the fusion of electronic elements with metal influences and instrumentation. You could say that it's the sweet, fun side of the games being overtaken by a dark side, full of mature concepts and evil things. Because I was like, uh, I don't know, pop is great for a while, but I wanted to see what it'd be like if we added that rock emphasis, because that's what we did back then. Did it fit? Eh, it's... I, I don't know if it really fit. Yes, Will, it did fit. As you can probably tell, this is my favorite era of FNAF music. The absurd amount of big songs kinda gives it away. This is because a good amount of the songs in this era are the least tied to the series. Let me explain. With the first era, the words Five Nights, 1987, Freddy, and It's Me saturate the lyrics. But with the second era, these words, for the most part, fall out of fashion. Some notable exceptions to this, of course, are the early DA Games song, like It's Time to Die, I'm the Purple Guy, plus the finale by Give Heart Records. As the era progressed, however, the lyrics turned more symbolic, where events and characters in the games are not said outright, but instead implied. Words like alone, mind, hell, home, nightmare, and the phrase monster under my bed grew in popularity. By the way, can we talk about Dying of Fire? The Mad Lad literally used the jump scare sound effect in the drop. Listen to this. Absolute Mad Lad. It was also during this time that the FNAF community seriously considered the thought that the series had concluded. Songs like The Finale by Give Heart Records were a mashup of their past songs as a then nostalgic look back to what they considered the end. Songs like Goodbye by Try Hard Ninja and DA Games were made to literally commemorate the game series. Lyrics like Thank you for playing our game can't really be taken any other way. Plus, Try Hard Ninja literally says in the description that it was made as a commemoration. Even The Living Tombstone made I Got No Time with the expectations that it would be the final song they made tied to the series, as stated in the description. Which brings us to one song, or well, mashup. On July 20th, 2015, three days before the release of FNAF 4, the YouTube channel Dan Klein uploaded a 7.5 minute mashup of 42 songs, which encapsulates the essence of the first two eras perfectly and shows the evolution of the FNAF music community as well as the change from electronic styles of music to metal styles of music. From the beginning of the mashup, you can hear the constant dubstep 2-4 backbeat groove moving into electronic buildup before the drop. Then there is a sudden change to a metal style breakdown before another buildup. We hear more metal rock drums as we progress to the end of the track before ending with a quote from Our Little Horror Story by Aviators. Because this mashup was made just before the release of FNAF 4, some of the big metal songs like Break My Mind, March Onward to Your Nightmare, and This Is The End are missing, but you can still hear the introduction of metal breakdowns and acoustic drums. Nearing the end of the big surge in FNAF fan songs during this time, FNAF World came out. From what I can find, there are only maybe four quote unquote big songs I Will Not Be Moved by DA Games, Join the Party by JT Music, and The Flip Side by Griffinilla and Shadru. And the FNAF World musical by Lugany? Uh, Lahugany? Lahugany, that guy. I have been skipping over the musicals from Lahugany and Random Encounters for a reason. 
These are some of the few bits of music that I have to say sadly have not aged very well. The Random Encounters song have good singing, acting, and music production, but the lyrics are cheesy after a listen through and the video made me feel like I'm in a fever dream. The strange fever dream, not the bad fever dream. It's not badly made, it's just very wacky. I still know all the lyrics though. I can't say the same about the Lahugany musicals. I'm sure people still like these musicals, but I just can't. The instrumentals are pretty decent, but the T-Pain style autotune that every character has just sounds bad. It even sounds out of tune with autotune. That's actually kind of impressive. The singing is also sometimes not in time with the instrumentals, but that's because of the number of syllables that Lahugany is trying to put into the verses don't work. Speaking of lyrics... Dude. No. But then we come to the FNAF World musical, which I consider the best one. The lyrics flow somewhat, the chorus with the crowd chant effect works nicely, and you can even hear a metal style breakdown before... the foxy rap. This foxy rap is weird, man. I also still know all the lyrics to these songs. Man, I was cringy as a child. But the FNAF World musical from the Hoogney, as well as the other popular tracks associated with FNAF World showcase a clear divide in the community as we near the end of Era 2. There are two sections of FNAF music. We have the mature style metal showcased in I Will Not Be Moved, and the more electronic style showcased in Lahugany and Join the Party by JT Music. Era 3, which includes FNAF Sister Location and Pizzeria Simulator, lasting from June 2016 to June 2018. The resurgence of electronic elements and the decline of FNAF music as a whole. This era also has the last The Living Tombstone song, and the introduction of CG5 as a driving force in the community. Acts like Give Heart Records and Try Heart Ninja are going strong, and Daco made his introduction to the community by promoting and collabing with CG5. Yes, I know DA Games collabed with them, but which one is more popular? Little known acts at the time such as Not A Robot and CK9C gained traction as well, with CK9C really getting their name out during the lifespan of Sister Location. This era also had the last hurrah from Groundbreaking, known for their character songs, with their final FNAF song My Innard gaining 3.3 million views and subsequently helping to boost the popularity of FNAF animators like Minecraft Gamer. This era is the end of many things. The end of the Living Tombstone, groundbreaking and aviators in regards to FNAF music, along with many other acts, the end of random encounters in Lahugany musicals, and the end of what I consider to be the golden age of FNAF music. The number of songs compared to the previous two eras considerably declined, even more so with Pizzeria Simulator. This era is musically defined not by the continuation of metal elements, but instead by the resurgence of electronica. The biggest acts of the time definitely helped with this, with CG5 and CK9C both infusing all of their sister location and Pizzeria Simulator songs with subby kicks and headcracker snares. This era also further divided the music styles in the FNAF community. CG5 and CK9C reinvigorated the electronic scene, and metal acts such as Give Heart Records and DA Games slowly started to fade from being the top dogs they were in the second era. Big songs during this time were Join Us For A Bite by JT Music, You Can't Hide and Trust Me by CK9C, I Can't Fix You by The Living Tombstone, Labyrinth, Let Me Through, and Like It Or Not by CG5, the latter of which features Dalko, Left Behind by DA Games, and Madness by Give Heart Records. This era also had the last song by Mandapony, Nothing Remains, which was released under his name Andrew Stein to the Give Heart Records channel before being taken down years later. The FNAF music scene during this time grew out of their quote-unquote edgy phase in Era 2, and in Era 3 embraced the modern electronic scene, making songs that sounded mature but not edgy like the way the second era handled the music. Some metal elements can still be found in electronic songs, such as the drums in Daddy's Little Monsters by Try Hard Ninja, but for the most part, the electronic elements separated themselves from the metal elements. Another aside, Try Hard Ninja kind of sounds like Michael Jackson in Welcome Back, doesn't he? I mean, listen to this. Anyways, have you noticed a melodic element that most of the songs in this era include? Take a listen.
hear those plucks? They are all over the place in this era. Whether it is a music box, piano, or some synthesized sound, there always seems to be a pluck at the high register to accompany the voice. And sometimes that's the only accompaniment. In songs such as They'll Keep You Running and You Can't Hide, there's only a voice and a pluck in the mid to high registers, while the chords, bass, and kick dominate the low end of the mix. There is also the prominent use of dubstep bass during the chorus, as seen in Dance to Forget by Try Hard Ninja and You Can't Hide by CK9C. These two aspects are the sound of Era 3. Era 4, which includes Ultimate Custom Night, Help Wanted, and Special Delivery, and spans from June 2018 to around August 2020. This era is classified by the hibernation of the FNAF music community, with no really new acts popping out except DeHusta. Instead, the big acts such as TryHard Ninja, DA Games, and GiveHard Records put out their songs to relatively low view counts compared to their previous works before moving on to other properties. The notable exception to this is JT Music, who made quite a few more raps than usual over this era, but all garnering considerably less views than his previous works. We also see CK9C fade from the limelight, as he never actually made an Ultimate Custom Night or VR song. Instead, he just made a whole bunch more Sister Location songs. The musical styles in this don't really change all that much from previous eras, but there is much less music in general. Some prominent things that I can point out are some hard dubstep drops in some UCN songs such as The Ultimate Night by Not A Robot and Replay Your Nightmare by Try Hard Ninja. You can also hear the persistence of dubstep drums and high plucks and the continued decline of metal elements in the music. The only artist at this time still making metal-infused tracks that I could find is Give Heart Records, with tracks such as Stay the Chorus and Obsolete. The real low point of this era comes with the release of FNAF AR Special Delivery. As of January 2022, only one FNAF AR song that I could find ever reached more than a million views, which says a lot when during FNAF VR's life cycle, big songs were still reaching 7 to 14 million views. While these views might sound high without context, Dying a Fire by The Living Tombstone racked up an astonishing 159 million views, and Like It or Not by CG5 gained 22 million views with a collaboration with Daco. By this time, even modern properties were getting more views from their music community. Notable examples of this are Die For You, a Valorant song by Grabbits, Brothers in Arms, a Cuphead song by DA Games, and Alistair's Game, a Has Been Hotel song by The Living Tombstone. Nearing the end of this era, the community faced another dilemma. Their game was dying, and the community was leaving to pursue other games. So on August 15th, 2020, Jaisu Mooney created the largest mashup of FNAF songs that I could find. This mashup collected a monstrous total of 58 FNAF songs, including just about every song I have talked about thus far. The mashup doesn't sound perfect, in fact, it sounds a bit chaotic. But it shouldn't sound clean or polished, or perfect, because it could never be. The music community evolved throughout its history, and trying to put all those songs from all those eras together could never work. And that's a good thing. Now we come around to the question that got you to click on this video. What is the sound of the FNAF fan song? The thing is, you can't answer that question with a straightforward answer. The only answer you can give is when. The songs have grown, have changed, and have evolved to where there isn't a defined sound for all FNAF music. If you were talking about the beginning of FNAF, then the sound would be dubstep a la Skrillex with way too many synths to count. What about during FNAF 3 and 4, when the hype was arguably at its peak? That sound would be electronic metal infused with swelling choruses and edgy lyrics. What about Sister Location? That sound was similar to the sound of FNAF 1 music, but with a loaded low end and a sparse high end. Maybe you believe that all FNAF music sounds like The Living Tombstone, but then acts like Aviators and Give Heart Records come to mind. Think that all music sounds like Mangold by Give Heart Records? Well, no. CK9C and CG5 have musical styles completely separate from Give Heart Records. There is no sound of the FNAF fan song because you can't pinpoint one thing similar in all of the FNAF fan songs other than their connection to the game series. But wait, this isn't the end. We still have one more era to talk about. The resurgence of the FNAF fan song. Eye, 
Terra 5, Security Breach and onward, from August 2020 to now. The resurgence of the FNAF fan song and the complete change of musical styles. The continued delay of FNAF Security Breach caused the music community to start releasing music surrounding the series well before the game actually released, effectively keeping the FNAF music scene on life support. Songs such as We Are Aware by Dolvando, He's a Scary Bear by Griffinilla, and Get Away by Try Hard Ninja kept the audience begging for FNAF Security Breach to get released. An interesting element of songs based on FNAF Security Breach before the game's release is the inclusion of 80s synths in some of the songs, notably Get Away and We Know What Scares You by Try Hard Ninja. But then the game was released, and the songs started rolling in. The three big songs currently are Superstar by CG5, Total Insecurity by Rocket Gaming, and Moving Up in the World by DA Games. Because the game was released only a mere month before the creation of this script, there aren't many songs, but I can safely say that the number of songs will grow as time goes on. This era changes the prominent style of music, however. The dubstep elements have stayed in songs such as Darkest Desire 2 by CG5, featuring DA Games, Dehusta, and Dalko, and Moving Up in the World by DA Games. Give Heart Records are still producing the only metal rock songs that I could find with To My Grave, but this era of FNAF fan music will not sound like dubstep or metal. Instead, I believe that this era of FNAF music will sound like modern electropop with 80s influence. When searching for FNAF Security Breach songs, Superstar by CG5 and Total Insecurity by Rocket Gaming kept popping up next to each other. Even DA Games has fewer views on their Security Breach song than Rocket Gaming, even though DA Games has around three times more subscribers and arguably a more dedicated FNAF fanbase. This era also follows lyrical styles similar to Era 2, with lyrics that don't outright state characters' names, but instead use metaphor, descriptors, phrases, and wordplay to get their lyrics. Overall, it seems as though the community is going through a renaissance. Taking modern music and adapting it to the series is how the community started, and with the number of new acts making their first FNAF fan songs, such as McGuire with I Come Alive and Casa J with My Superstar, along with underground acts like Cam Steady with Security Breach and of course, Rocket Gaming blowing up with Total Insecurity. This shows that the new breed of music creators, most of whom grew up with the FNAF community, will continue making songs for a very long time. Along with this, the addition of more indie creators in the Fanverse initiative, along with Steel Wolf Studios and other bigger companies, it seems like many of the fans that have left the community might just come back. Maybe even new fans of this series will join the community and make their own content. Maybe we will see the return of old acts such as The Living Tombstone or Groundbreaking. Or just maybe, we will see a new powerhouse of fan music enter the scene and blow everything out of the water. The sound of the FNAF fan song has changed. From dubstep to heavy metal, then to dark techno, and now transitioning to modern 80s infused pop. Will the sound change with the introduction of other games? Only time will tell. Thanks for watching. Hey, thanks for watching this video. This video probably took stupid long, and I appreciate it that you made it this far. If you liked it, why not comment what you thought about it? Maybe I got your favorite song in here, maybe I didn't. Maybe there's this new person that's come out with the biggest FNAF song anywhere, and I just haven't gotten around to it. Thank you to all of the artists that have made FNAF content over the years, and I'm not just talking about music. Thank you to the animators, to the artists, to the story makers, to anyone who has made FNAF content, as y'all kept the game alive. There is no community like FNAF anywhere. I, I guess that's it.